<laughs> this is insanely cool. It's a surreal scene. What's up, guys? It's Kim Java, and today we're going to take you back in Tesla history back to a time when not only the viability of EVs were in question, but so was Tesla's entire survival. I'm standing behind that guarantee with all of my assets, not, not just with, with Tesla. So no matter what, um, I will make sure that you have nothing to worry about if you buy a Model S. Now, if you know about the Tesla death watch, then you've been following Tesla for over a decade as that was around the time when everyone, and I mean everyone, was stepping on Tesla while they were already down. But, but don't forget, you put $90 billion, mm -hmm. like 50 years worth of breaks into, into solar and wind and Fisker and Tesla. And you don't just pick the winners and losers, you pick the losers. There were actually sites and bloggers who even had a running clock with the so-called death watch counting down to the company's last breath. And that was easy too, because veteran big auto experts backed nearly all negative claims about Tesla for years to come. Even the high-end cars that they build now cost more to build than they're able to sell them for. Mercedes, BMW, Volkswagen, GM, Audi, and Porsche are all coming out with 300 mile electric luxury sedans. I think they're doomed. But before we get started, please do me a huge favor and click that like button. We put a lot of time and effort into these unique stories for you, and it helps us out tremendously when you click that. And of course, do subscribe if you enjoy our content as well. Here's something I bet you don't see every day. A look at what Tesla's website looked like in October 2007. A simple layout with little to offer besides a few positive accolades and its $100,000 Roadster for sale. Yeah, it was kind of one of those good luck with that situations. Now, let's fast forward to 2011 and things looked a little brighter on what was then teslamotors.com. The Model S was rolling out and Tesla offered you three tiers to choose from, a long range 85 kilowatt hour pack, a mid tier 60 kilowatt hour pack, and a base 40 kilowatt hour pack with 160 miles of range. Now look at that price point of the base model. Super attractive deal, right? Get into a fancy Tesla that only celebs you saw on TV owned and you could drive one for about $49,000. Plus, you'll probably be able to get it for closer to $45,000 when you factor in a lot of the US states had generous state credits as well. Effectively making the brand new Model S as cheap as a base Model 3 today, exactly eight years later. Personally, I would have jumped on this deal had I even known about it, but to me, all Teslas cost 100K, and I think a lot of people today might even still think that way. But remember, there were no YouTube channels about it. Definitely no ads, not even a showroom in our state for years to come. I think we'd only seen about one Tesla a month on roads, and believe me, I grabbed my iPhone 4S as quickly as I could, and I got a picture. In fact, I took this picture in early 2013 and remember geeking out about it. Notice these cars were so early in production that Tesla didn't even badge them as a 60 or an 85 kilowatt hour car. That's our Nissan Leaf, by the way, and we later added this Nissan Leaf to go with it, and we've been hooked on EVs ever since. Now, if you're a fan of the ultimate unicorn of all Teslas, March 31st, 2013 is the date for your Tesla trivia book. This is when Tesla announced that they were canceling the 40 kilowatt hour Model S all together, citing that only 4% of its customers had opted for them in the several years that they had been taking orders. Now think about that for a second. 4% of Tesla customers in April of 2013 meant that the 7,600 Model S's ever built to that point, only about 304 customers had opted for the so-called affordable 160 mile range Tesla. The truth was that Elon and Tesla realized right away this car wasn't going to make it. We had a, an intense debate at Tesla about the 40 kilo, kilowatt hour car. And, um, and you know, we, 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 we test drove some initial units and it just wasn't, it wasn't a good product. And one of the commitments I made at Tesla is that we will never produce a bad product, just never. I, I don't care, even if we could make money on it, uh, on, 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 a, on a bad product, we will, not, we will just not do it. And, and, and I, I just don't think the 40 kilowatt hour was, was, was a good product. It was, it was, 
it felt hobbled, like a hobbled horse. So Tesla did keep their promise. In April of 2013, Tesla emailed the roughly 304 customers who had opted for the $49,000 Model S and told them they would actually be getting a 60 kilowatt hour Model S on the house. But they would be software limited to what they paid for, the 40 kilowatt hour. So they would still get the advertised 160 miles. They were also given a $12,000 option to upgrade it if they wanted and unlock the remaining 20 kilowatt hours of range. Out of curiosity, I tracked down a handful of existing 40 kilowatt hour Model S customers who are still driving their rare Teslas and they're all reporting a range closer to 120 to 130 miles as of 2020. That sort of range is almost unheard of by Tesla standards today, of course. So the owner told me there is some good news and some bad news for these Model S's. The bad news is that they own one of the only Teslas in the world with no supercharger access ever granted. Of course, the range is always a hindrance with a realistic 120 miles, basically making it a glorified Nissan Leaf under real world conditions. You're also hauling around an extra 20 kilowatt hours of battery as dead weight with these software limited cars, so that doesn't help. The owners did share some good news though. They can charge to 100% every night without worry because their car is programmed to only fill up to about 70% of the actual pack, even though the slider is all the way to the right. They also benefit from a slight performance boost given they're actually using a larger 60 kilowatt hour battery pack. The car was only in production in the first three months of 2013, making the 40 kilowatt hour Model S not only the ultimate unicorn of Tesla, but it has become even more rare as about half of those 300 cars are estimated to have been traded back to Tesla, which Tesla in turn flips the switch on and resells them as 60 kilowatt hour cars. That leaves only about 150 true software limited 40 kilowatt hour Model S's left in the world today. Incredible to think that there was a time when Tesla tried to sell an affordable EV and no one wanted it. With that said, of course, it's a different world for Tesla today than just a few years ago. In fact, most of the Teslas on the road are now under that $49,000 price point. And there are so many that a few days ago, we took part and set a Guinness Book of World Record for the most Teslas in a parade. We were one of the over 300 Teslas driving down the road here in Atlanta. Look at this guy, looks pissed. Oh my gosh. Oh yeah. He's like, I am late to a meeting. Oh, the guy standing outside yeah. his car? He's like, how many more of you are there? He's not gonna be a referral anytime <laughs> soon. I don't think I've ever seen this many Teslas. Have you seen that many green Teslas? I mean. <laughs> Liam, are you seeing those green wrapped Teslas? Yeah. Are we? Morning, Good morning. is this what you're looking for? Yep. We're gonna just check a couple things. Are they gonna clean our car afterwards too? <laughs> right, WFV. I mean, how many Teslas can get in an accident at the same time? <laughs> is that what is that what we're doing here? How many Teslas? If you crash this many Teslas, what will happen? Look at dude, you need to get out of our Tesla parade. <laughs> The previous record was 145 Teslas that was set in China. And the organizer of this parade donated 100% of the proceeds to bring awareness to human and child trafficking. I'll link that below for you to consider donating a few dollars if you have the means. Okay, and if you like the shirt that I am wearing, or other inspiring Elon quotes on merch for men, women, or kids, please check out our website, itskimjava.com. We also have collabs with shops like this cool Tesla cookie cutter and this pre-formatted plug and play Sentry Mode USB drive. And if you enjoyed these little known fact deep dives about Tesla, I think that you'll also enjoy a video that we did a while back about the eight surprising facts about Tesla that most people don't know. Like what unique EV part inspired the Tesla T logo shape and design and the role of all things Mickey Mouse played in Tesla's history. I'll link that here and be sure to check out our EV inspired shop, itskimjava.com. Thanks again for your love and your support and be sure to subscribe and we'll see you guys next time. Thanks. Oh, you, you did such a good job. You were so patient. Mwah. Say bye bye. See you guys next time. <laughs>
Snickers, little Snickers. This looked a little brighter on what was then. I, I know, I know. Back in the gonna, gonna. Get into a fancy Tesla that only celebs, bleh, the only celebs you saw on TV. It'd be kind of cute if I like hold her for the last little bit. Next time on It's Kim Java. I think this stuff is of, of sci-fi novels and movies and it's so far away, but yeah. every time I hear you speak, it's like, well, no, this stuff is sitting, it's, it's right here. I like exploring, I like technology. I like creating things that have never been seen before or even imagined before. This video is a little more of a discussion piece on a topic that I've been thinking a lot about recently. We've seen people refer to Tesla drivers as fanboys, Elon sheep, and so on. So it made me wonder if Tesla's fan base and even Elon's following are actually becoming a little too cult-like.